The dome behind me rests over the main branch of the Bank of Montreal, and for many years, this has been its stock in trade. It's a Canadian $1 bill, but say goodbye, because from now on, this is a Canadian dollar. It's almost a step back into history. When de Maisonneuve founded Montreal almost 350 years ago, his followers put their trust in metal coins, which had value not just for the numbers on them, but for the real value of the metal in the coin. Trouble was, there were never enough metal coins to go around, so the French government would issue paper money, and in times of desperation, they would take playing cards, write a value on it, each card signed by the intendant. They didn't clink like real money, and they sure weren't as reliable. Because in 1763, when the British took New France, the French government refused to honor its paper money, and thousands were impoverished overnight. When the Bank of Montreal opened its doors in 1817, there still wasn't enough money to go around, so a great many merchants made their own money called bonds, because they began with the French words bon pour, good for, and whatever the amount was. What they were really worth, of course, depended on the reputation of the merchant. That's why most people still preferred solid metal coins. And this gentleman in the cage behind me on a typical working day might be expected to work in American silver dollars, British shillings, and the very popular Spanish real. This is an eight real coin, uh, what was called a piece of eight. Um, a quarter of it, of course, would be two reals. And that's why even today some people refer to a quarter as two bits. It was the British Army that got us used to the idea of paper money. These British Army bills circulated in the first half of the 19th century proved to be so reliable that the most skeptical of Canadians were convinced. And when the Canadian government began issuing its own currency in 1858, it decided to rely on paper for everything from a dollar up. There was even a time when paper displaced coins. In 1870, Canada was flooded with American coins of very doubtful value. So Canadian banks responded with a 25-cent piece of paper money, the shin plaster, and the sight of this brightened many a child's eye at Christmas. Well, now paper seems to be going into a retreat again. But really, there's no difference between the dollar bill and the dollar coin. The old coins had value because of the metal that was in them. The, the paper has no value. The metal in this coin is of no great value. They are both based on the assurance that somewhere the Canadian government has the money to back them up. Our earliest ancestors wouldn't have liked that very much, but the British Army bills got us used to the idea, and it seems to work.